This is your Weather Extreme video for Saturday, August the 29th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in. The uh, surface map this morning shows generally a high pressure system over the eastern third of the country with a traveling weather system up uh, approaching the Great Lakes. And, of course, we have uh, just off the map where you can't see it, we have Erica. And Erica is certainly giving us uh, fits. In the upper air pattern, we have uh, a bit of a... Uh, uh, conundrum here because it's uh, a weak pattern and that weak pattern may actually help to enhance the shower chances over the southeastern U.S. Uh, today and maybe even tomorrow. We can see that uh, weak upper uh, level disturbance uh, generally over Mobile. Let's take a look at another uh, water vapor image and this one shows it a little uh, more clearly because it's getting some uh, dry air wrapped in around uh, the uh, circulation. Uh, you can see that dry air over Mississippi in the orange color and then going into the northern Gulf and then coming back towards Mobile. That is where the, the uh, upper low is, and that will be circulating around, meandering around the lower Mississippi River Valley. In the meantime, of course, temperatures across the United States are uh, definitely not bad for August. I mean, it's fairly warm across the country uh, with no real extremes, unless you consider the 91 extreme. And I guess at 5 a.m., that's pretty extreme down there in the southwestern U.S. Across central Alabama, we're basically around the lower 70s. And it uh, looks like today we'll probably not see much out of the uh, mid 80s as uh, we have additional clouds and we also see uh, some showers. Looking at the uh, overall radar chart for the southeastern U.S. Uh, we're pretty free of showers in central Alabama right now, but there are showers uh, to our southeast and they're coming this way. Quantitative precipitation forecasting for the next five days shows uh, on the order of four to five inches across the Florida Peninsula, and that's because of the presence of Erica or the remnants of Erica. Uh, we'll have to wait and see about that. Storm Prediction Center is uh, not outlooking any slight risk or marginal risk areas, but uh, a, a large area of thunderstorms forecast. There is a marginal risk over South Florida and Southwest Florida on uh, day two as Erica approaches. And on day three, we see that that uh, threat is still there. All right, we've been talking a little bit about Erica. There's a wide look at the overall uh, satellite image of the tropics, and you can see Erica there just to the south of the Hispaniola or southwest of the Hispaniola uh, landmass. And uh, we have a little uh, disturbed area out there in the uh, middle, and then you can't see it, but there's another one coming off of Africa. Here's a close up look of uh, Erica, and Erica is still uh, <laughs> maintaining uh, her shyness by. Uh, Defying forecasters, continues to uh, move nearly due west, but it is expected to turn a little to the northwest later today. And uh, out on the uh, coming off the African coast, we have this disturbance. Let's look at the uh, National Hurricane Center's track. Uh, track of uh, Erica has been progging a little to the west continuously. Uh, it progged over into Florida and then back out over the east coast and in the last uh, 24, 36 hours has been shifting a little bit further to the west with just about each model run. And you can see the various computer model runs. There's a good deal of uncertainty <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, uh, with Erica. And uh, the one that's coming off the uh, African peninsula, the African continent, excuse me, uh, been thinking too much about the Florida Peninsula. Uh, that one looks like it'll stay out in the Atlantic. All right, let's get look, uh, take a look at modeling, and um, we'll start off with the upper air chart for uh, today, and that shows one of our problems. Uh, we have a nice trough coming across the Great Lakes, but the problem is we have this weak uh, disturbance in the upper atmosphere, generally in the vicinity of uh, southwest Alabama, southeast Mississippi. Uh, maybe Mobile might be a good landmark there. Uh, and that's uh, helping to create a good uh, environment for showers, especially to uh, just to the east of that uh, upper low. The problem is, where is it going to go? And uh, the GFS suggests that it's going to meander around and maybe even come up into Alabama on Sunday. Uh, and uh, with that, it uh, actually shows more showers again. The problem here is if when we look at precipitable water is there is some dry air in there. Um, you know, if we were over the two-inch mark in that uh, magenta color, I'd say we're going to have showers. But because we have less precipitable water, 
we'll probably see only a few showers. Going out to uh, Monday, we see that uh, little closed low under the ridge. Uh, generally, it's a ridge over the eastern half of the country, but we have this little closed low over Arkansas. And once again, that's cause for at least a few showers. And once again, looking at precipitable water, you can see over Alabama, the precipitable water is well below one and a half inches. So I think showers that occur are going to be very few and far between. When you get out to Tuesday, we, we don't have a closed low, but if you look really closely, you can see that there is a circulation in there, and that circulation, once again, helping to keep us somewhat unsettled, uh, and uh, it's hard to find uh, Erica in this map, too. Maybe that uh, area of showers over the Florida Peninsula is it, but looking at the European, it's kind of interesting. The European does the same thing. It really doesn't have an organized Erica uh, over uh, or just to the west of the uh, Florida Peninsula. Getting back to the GFS, we still have this disturbance uh, over the lower Mississippi River Valley. You can see it in the wind field and also in the uh, vorticity uh, charts there. But uh, that's going to be nothing more than producing some rain over the uh, southeast and some scattered showers over the southeastern U.S. Thursday, we see the uh, closed low come back but it's moved to the southwest, and it's uh, over the uh, northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And so we see some showers, uh, a good possibility over that area. But over our area, once again, can't probably rule them out completely, but they're probably be few and far between. We still have this big ridge on Friday, but we have this closed low uh, over the southeast Texas coast, and that responsible for at least some showers along the northwest uh, coast of uh, the Gulf. And then there it is. It's still there on Saturday, a week from today, and maybe responsible for a few more showers. But in the meantime, maybe what's left of Erica has gotten up into the southeastern U.S. Ah, it's one of those things where you kind of want to throw up your hands with the forecast with all these weak systems. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. I expect to have the next one posted first thing on Sunday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the blog for updates on our weather situation. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed.